Hi everybody and welcome to this lecture on rooting compounds. Plant hormones or phytohormones are substances that are synthesized by plants and they trigger specific physiological responses such as the division, enlargement and differentiation of cells into specific tissue types. The main groups of plant hormones are listed in the box on the right. For propagation from cuttings, the group of hormones that's of most interest to us are the auxins, because they're the most influential hormones in the production of adventitious roots. The gibberellins can be useful for, for promoting germination of seed, and cytokinins are used in tissue culture to promote the production of shoots. In this lecture, though, the focus is on auxins. Auxins were the first category of plant hormone to be recognized back in the 1930s. The main naturally occurring auxin in plants is a compound called indole-3-acetic acid, which is usually shortened to IAA. IAA has several different roles in the plant, including inducing cell elongation, cell division, and root formation. A second auxin called IBA, indole-butyric acid, is also produced by some plants, but in much smaller amounts than IAA. Natural auxins are produced in apical meristems of both shoots and roots and in young leaves, and they move in a bicipital direction in the plant, meaning they move towards the crown of the plant. In the aerial parts of the plant, this means auxins are generally moving in a more or less downward direction, in the roots, it means they are generally moving in a more or less upwards direction. The production of IAA by plants can be triggered by wounding, such as the action of us as propagators cutting a stem from a plant. IAA degrades quickly when it's exposed to light, and it's also metabolized quickly by both plant tissues and microorganisms. This lack of longevity can be a problem from a plant propagation point of view because we want the auxins to be present and active for quite a while in order to initiate adventitious roots. For this reason, naturally occurring IAA isn't used in most commercially available rooting compounds. Not long after auxins were recognized as plant hormones, two synthetic auxins were developed. One was NAA, alpha naphthalene acetic acid, and the second was a synthetic form of the naturally occurring IBA. These two synthetic auxins were found to be much more effective than the naturally occurring IAA in promoting adventitious root formation. They also have the advantage of not being as light sensitive as IAA, so they don't break down as fast. In propagation, synthetic auxins are applied to the base of cuttings to promote adventitious root formation. Sometimes in larger nurseries, they might be applied as a foliar application through a boom irrigation system, as this saves on labor time. The plant response to these exogenous auxins isn't universal though, meaning it's not the same for every plant. Different strengths of root and compound are required for different species and for different types of cutting. Some cuttings don't respond at all to the application of exogenous auxins, and these hard to root plants are often described as being recalcitrant. You might find it interesting that applied in large quantities, auxins can also be used to kill plants, as in the herbicide 2,4-D. In propagation, we have several choices of rooting compound formulation. There are powders, alcohol-based liquids, gels, and soluble salts that are dissolved in water. Depending on the brand, these rooting compounds include either NAA or IBA alone, or both of them in combination. The rooting compound we choose depends on the crop, the required auxin strength, the number of cuttings to be treated, cost, and personal preference. Some growers absolutely love Hormex, which is a powder, while others, including myself, really like liquid compounds, such as dip and grow. Depending on the species we're propagating, the application of a rooting compound isn't always necessary. However, it can speed up the rooting process and promote more uniform rooting, which can both compensate for the additional labor cost of applying rooting compounds. 
Rooting compounds are available in ready-to-use formulations in varying strengths, or you can buy them as concentrates and then dilute them to the required strength. As propagators, we need to select the most appropriate strength for the crop being propagated. It's important to remember that using a higher strength or using more product than is necessary isn't always better because higher concentrations of auxins can inhibit root elongation. So let's take a closer look at the various formulations of rooting compound that are available to us. Rooting compound powders have the auxins mixed into a talcum powder base. The most common commercial brand is Hormex, which has just IBA in it. It's available in a variety of strengths from 1,000 parts per million for really easy to root material to 30,000 parts per million for very hard to root material, such as English yew and English holly. Powders are easy to use, but they can blow around, so make sure you're using them in a draft-free space so you don't inhale any of the powder or get it in your eyes. One of the disadvantages of powders compared to liquids is that they're not in a form that's readily available to the plant. Plants can only take up liquids, so the powder rooting compounds have to dissolve first in water that's held by the substrate. If you're working with plants that prefer a fairly dry substrate, you may find that the powder doesn't dissolve well and therefore isn't very available to the cutting. In this case, you may find a liquid or a gel rooting compound is more effective. When you're using a powder, a little goes a long way, so just empty a really small amount into a shallow container. Unless you're sticking more than 1500 cuttings, there's probably no need to put more than half a teaspoon of powder in the container. Never dip cutting material into the original container, as you don't want to contaminate it, and never put leftover powder back into the box. After you've prepared the cutting, Dip the basal end into the powder, as you can see in the photo on the top right here. Some propagators prefer to moisten the ends of the cuttings first if they're not already moist so that the powder sticks better. Some propagators also prefer to dibble a hole in the substrate before sticking the cutting so that the powder doesn't rub off. You then have to lightly back backfill the hole around the base of the cutting, and this can be more labour intensive. Liquid rooting compounds are available as concentrates that you buy already dissolved in an alcohol base. You can also buy soluble salts that you then dissolve in either distilled water or reverse osmosis water. The most commonly available alcohol-based liquid is dip and grow, and the most widely used water-soluble salts in the US are sold under the brand name Hortus. One of the main advantages of liquid concentrates is that you can mix them to the desired strength. You can't do this with powders and gels. If you work with a variety of plant material that needs different strength rooting compounds, then liquids may be a better product than powders or gels if you don't want to buy a wide range of different strength powders. One of the other main advantages of liquid rooting compounds is that they're immediately available for uptake by the cutting. Also, their distribution on the base of cuttings can be more uniform than a powder. Alcohol-based liquids can act as a surface sterilant, although there are some reports that the alcohol can burn very soft herbaceous material. In this case, you might be better advised to use soluble salts applied as a foliar feed for this type of plant material. The main disadvantage of liquid rooting compounds is that they have to be mixed. This adds another step to the labour process and can be a source of error if the person doing the mixing doesn't prepare the appropriate strength. The other drawback to the alcohol-based liquids is that they're just not strong enough for some of the particularly hard to root cuttings such as English holly and English yew which I mentioned earlier. These two species need about 30,000 parts per million of IBA whereas the maximum strength of alcohol-based rooting compounds is usually only around 15,000 parts per million. For these particularly hard to root species, you'll need to use Hormex number 30, a powder formulation which has 30,000 parts per million, or the hottest water-soluble potassium salts of IBA, which you can use to obtain solutions that contain up to 100,000 parts per million of IBA. 
Always prepare your li liquid rooting compound before you prepare your cuttings so that you can dip them and plant them as quickly as possible once you've prepared them. Usually you dip the bottom half inch or more on longer cuttings into the liquid for between one and five seconds. You then stick the cutting immediately and there's usually no need to dibble a hole. You can usually dip several cuttings at once if the hormone's in a fairly wide container and this can speed up the sticking process and reduce the number of repetitive movements that workers have to make. And lastly, gels. Gels are semi-solid products, usually in a cellulose space, and they stick to whichever plant part they're applied to. Commonly available brands include Clonex and Dynagro. An advantage of gels is that no mixing is involved. They're ready to use and there's no loose powder to blow around. Some manufacturers claim that the gel forms a protective covering around the wounded area at the base of a cutting and protects it from pathogens but I can't find any scientific research that backs up these claims. One of the big disadvantages of gels is that you can't change the strength. Given that the auxin strength is relatively weak in these, in these products, you're limited to using them for material that roots pretty easily. I've also found that the gel can slide up the stem of a cutting when you're sticking it, so you may need to dibble a hole first, which of course is an additional labor step and then you need to press the substrate back around the base of the cuttings. That's the end of this lecture on rooting compounds. I really encourage you to try out a variety of products in the labs to see which ones work best and which ones you prefer working with. So happy propagating and head back to Canvas now.